horizontal shifts. Let's take y equals x squared. And let's say that, God help us all, this is the basic graph. And suppose I say to myself, self, this is really boring. I want to move it to the side. How about over to negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, and I want to draw it just the same there. I'm not going to stretch it or anything else. All I want to do is physically move it over to negative five. So here, x equals zero over here x equals negative five. Well, we're going to start with x equals negative five in order to know how to write the transformation. x equals negative five. I have to have a zero over here, just like I have to have with a factor. So I'm going to add five, add five to both sides of the equation. So I'll have X plus five equals zero what x used to equal. That's going to be my coding. This guy right here is going to be coded as, that is the shifted is going to be coded as y equals that movement right there. If I wanted to, move this parabola over to the right seven units, it's way too big. Terrible. There. Should be more curved. Anyway, I'm taking this and I'm moving it over here, seven units. How would I code that? I would take X equals seven, which is where it's at now. I would subtract seven from both sides because that's just what you have to do. So, so professor, professor, if I'm understanding, if I'm understanding correctly, correctly. Um, if it's x plus five in the y equals x plus five, uh, you shift to the left, and if it's negative, whereas at x minus seven, you shift it to the right. You got it. 
Great. It's backwards from what you would expect. Means shift left five units. Here. means shift right. Five units. So horizontal transformations take more thinking. So let's say we want to shift these functions five units to the left like we did. So function shift five units to the left. And here are our functions x squared, x cubed, um, the absolute value of x, square root of x, cube root of x. We're going to go to the left five units. x plus 5 squared, because it's x squared, x plus five cubed, because it, the original function is x cubed. The absolute value of x plus five, because this is the absolute value function. The square root of x plus five, where now the plus five is actually underneath the square root radical. Same for the cube root radical. For people with the older operating system, you're going to have abs x plus 5 square root x plus 5, cube root, x plus 5. And I think this stays the same. Oh, actually with the older operating system, parentheses, x plus 5, no, you're going to get a squared, but parentheses x plus 5, to get a cube, you have to go caret 3. And let's just say it explicitly so you can be reading these when you get home. x squared x cubed, absolute value of x, square root of x, cube root of x. If we want to, oops, shift right seven units, 
that'll be parentheses x plus 7 squared x plus 7 cubed absolute value of x plus 7. Notice it's the function itself that's getting altered. I need to tell you what that's called. In a minute. Doesn't it have to be minus 7 to go to the right? Oh, yes. Thank you. You're welcome. There. And the cube root. See, it's tricky. And you would code it up there, except you would say X minus seven. Let's go through a couple of more transformations. Maybe we shouldn't. Go ahead and take a break. I know this is stressful. This is new. And it's intricate. So um, let's, let's, until 9.15, let's reconvene at 9.15. Now we can talk about horizontal stretches and shrinks. I don't know if you know what an accordion looks like, but it's like a little organ that you can play by pumping it. Um, so a stretch is like, a horizontal stretch is like that. A horizontal shrink is like you're compressing it. So what a horizontal stretch is really is you're expanding sideways. And what a horizontal shrink is, is you're contracting sideways. You're, you're squishing sideways. Best I can do. Okay, some functions don't show this very well. So, let's work with one that does show it. f of x or y equals the square root of x. Okay, and there are some points I know that are on that graph. Um, let's see, the square root of zero is zero. Square root of one is one. The square root of four is two. And the square root of nine is three. Now that's important because we're going to look at what happens when you stretch that graph horizontally. But we're gonna look at the points to show it and then we'll put it on the graphing calculator. Now, if I want to stretch horizontally by a factor of two. That's easier to show. If I, oh, stretch, T-C-H.
stretch horizontally by a factor of two. This is what it's going to look like, and I have to explain to you why. Y equals the square root of one half X. It's exactly the opposite for what it would be to stretch vertically. To stretch vertically, I would have a two on the outside front of the function. But to stretch vertically by a factor of two, not one half, but two, to stretch it by a factor of two, make it twice as long. <clears throat> I put a one half in front of the X inside the function. That is in what's called the argument of the function. How does that work and why? Well, okay, here, I've got to tell you why it works that way. You've been speaking all English all day until now, and I knew it had to be too good to be true. <laughs> it couldn't be that simple. <laughs> Man. Okay. Okay, yeah, yeah. Had to fall into it, huh? Okay. Yeah, I almost bought it. Never trust a math teacher. Here's why. All of the X coordinates, these X coordinates, not the Y's, but the X's. All the X coordinates in the original function get divided by are divided by either the stretch or the shrink factor. So let's look and see what happens. Um, all right, original function, y equals the square root of x and y equals the square root of one half x. So here we had zero, zero, again, one, one, four, two, nine, three, and oh, what the heck, 16, Four. Over here, make really big. Okay, the Y coordinates stay exactly the same. They don't go anywhere. The X coordinates are going to be divided by 
one half. So you'll have zero divided by one half. Let's just say 0. 0.5, it's easier. You'll have it's one. Is, yes? Isn't that, isn't that the same as multiplying times a half? No, it's the same as multiplying by two. Oh. Huh. Uh, four divided by 0. 0.5. Nine divided by 0. 0.5. And 16 divided by 0. 0.5. So that will give us, don't need a calculator for the first two, that'll still be zero, zero. If you take one and divide it by one half, you get two. If you take, ah, uh, not, bleh, bleh, bleh. There you go. All right. Now, I'm thinking of too many different things at the same time. Okay. Whenever you divide by one half, it's the same as multiplying by two. So let me do this on the calculator. Just prove it to you, okay? Four divided by 0.5. is eight. Nine divided by 0. 0.5. 16 divided by 0. 0.5. All right, so that'll be eight to 18, three, Yeah, and 32, four. So instead of looking like this, if this is the basic graph, the new graph is going to look like that. So let's take a look. There's our basic graph. And in fact, I'm going to change the window so we can see better. There's our basic graph. Now I'm going to graph All right, I'm going to graph second x, yeah, second x squared, 0.5x. It looks like it's being shrunk, but it's actually being pulled out so that instead of 1, 1 being located at 1, 1, it's now located at 2, 1. So that one value has been stretched out to 2. The 4 value has been stretched out to 8. That is the point 4, 2 has been stretched out to 8, 2. So now that 2 y-coordinate is occurring out at 8, 
instead of in here at four. So here's where it was. Out there is where it is now. Now, if we were going to shrink this by a factor of two, So let's put the points in there again. Zero, zero, one, one, four, two, nine, um, 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 three, and sixteen, four. Here you've got a horizontal shrink by a factor of two. Or think compression. Calling it a shrink sounds like you're talking about your psychologist. Horizontal shrink by factor. I think that's pretty funny. Factor of Two. All right, now, uh, thank you, thank you. Now the points are going to have all the same Y coordinates. Oh, that's a four. Four, three, two, one. Zero, but the Y coordinates are going to get divided by two. So. Zero, two, one, two, four, two, nine, two, sixteen, two. So that we have the point still zero, zero. One half, one, two, two, uh, four point, no, no, not three point five, four point five. Yeah, four point five. Four point five, three, and eight, four. So that makes it look higher, but it's not. It's also squished together and it's really hard to change your thinking. OK, all right. Yeah, it looks higher. Yeah, yeah, but but that's because it's getting squished. So second X squared. 2x. This is going to be the third graph to come up. See, it looks higher, but it's actually a shrink. Right. How? When the line goes just as far or farther. Um, notice what's happening to the X coordinates. Um, instead of being at one, we're at one half. Instead of being at four, we're at two. Instead of being at nine, we're at four and a half. Oh, so, it's getting so all the X coordinates have been halved, but the Y coordinates, how high it is, stays the same. So instead of having a graph that looks like this, you have a graph with all of these Y coordinates squished together, which makes it look higher. 
and it is higher. Trust me. <laughs> we'll leave it like that. <clears throat> So uh, it's also the fact that if you're just talking about horizontal, it's getting squished. If you were talking about vertical, yeah, it's higher. But it's not exactly the same thing as having a two on the outside. You will have different, different points. So also, yeah, you have to isolate your thinking. So you're just thinking about horizontal movement. You're just thinking about that. Which is hard. Now, finally. We've got a horizontal reflection. And again, it's hard to show these reflections. So really the only basic function that shows a horizontal reflection well is y equals the square root of x. So a horizontal reflection is sideways across the y axis. So here's the square root of x. We're going to reflect it across the y axis by doing this. Second x squared, negative, not minus, negative x. Boom. Isn't that pretty? It's kind of pretty. Now, while we're at it, I gave a whole extra page to this. but there's really no need to. So let's do a diagonal reflection here. Which, which is also called a reflection across the origin. Origin being zero, zero. origin. All right, if our basic function is y equals the square root of x, There it is, home position. We are going to reflect this across that point. In other words, diagonally. And how I do that is this. Negative the square root of negative x.
So negative square root negative x. It's like they're mirror images across that point, if you can imagine a mirror. <clears throat> 